I mean, I think, you know, that's, it's not just on me. It's not yep. just on any leader. I think um, as guys who are committed, uh, regardless of the situation, you, you know, you call it out. It's not, we don't have the luxury of, you know, having games to, to waste and figure things out. Um, we need it right now. And so whoever um, those players are that you know are going to put everything into it, that are fully committed, regardless of what's facing us or what's behind us, um, those are the guys that you want to be out there on the field with. Um, those are the coaches that you want being invested in the game plan. Um, and so, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Schwartz said he thought as much as anything on Sunday that the run defense was disappointing. Uh, and I'm, Breeze is Breeze. He's going to be Breeze. But do you, did you, do you concur with that? And yeah, what, what did they average? Like seven yards of carry? Something like that. How do you get I mean, how could you not be disappointed? You got a pretty good challenge coming up this week, too. With, with where do you see is the breakdowns or? Well, at the end of the day, you got to man up. And, you know, runs, they had the one big run. But other than that, really, none of the runs got out of the grasp of the defense. They just moved us for five, six yards every time they ran it. Um, you know, so that's a direct, I think, challenge to our demeanor, our uh, toughness, um, who we are as men. It's not like. They had a scheme that we just couldn't handle or they were breaking. They had like two runs. One was a breakdown. The other was a missed tackle. But other than that, they ran it right at us and moved the ball. So that's a gut check for us. But that's two weeks in a row that's happened now in terms of defending a run. Mm -hmm. How alarming has it become to you? I mean, there's a ton of things on this team right now that are alarming. <laughs> the run defense is one of them. Um, and I think most, <clears throat> most, um, it's most disappointing because we've always taken pride in stopping the run. Um, you know, that comes down to a multitude of things. But, you know, at the end of the day, um, we can't, we got to dominate at the line of scrimmage. And so that's, that's where we make our plays as a defense is being able to, um, you know, challenge teams when they try to run it to get one, two yard stops or even some negative stops. And then they're behind the sticks and we can pass rush. They're running the ball for six yards of carry. You're at, you know, second and four, even if you, um, you know, get a play on second down, that's still third and four or less, which is really, really hard to convert on when you got, um, you know, teams with running quarterbacks like you got in Dallas or uh, Drew Brees who can just get the ball out of his hands to a quick receiver. Um, that makes it challenging on us. So um, we do got to get back to being able uh, to, to dominate on first and second down when they run the ball. Um, Malcolm, when you have a bunch of injuries, how do you, like, balance using that as a as Whoever's a, on the field is who we're going to play yeah, with. Um, Sorry. Whoever's out there, we got to play with. I mean, yeah, it's, that's just the name of the game. There's no need wasting energy fretting about who's out there. It's get them prepared, get them confident, and go play ball. You How do you that? get those you young guys that? confident out there, though, when you get they haven't reps. been there for a while? You get them reps. I mean, this is this is the situation that's not for the faint of heart or for the weak-minded. We need real men um, who don't mind, you know, getting beat, who don't, <clears throat> who don't let – you know, other teams making plays bother them um, because we're going to have to weather a ton. You know, we understand that it's inexperience back there. We don't expect people to be com um, perfect, but we expect whoever's out there to compete and fight. Um, and then we, as, you know, <clears throat> teammates, as coordinators, as coaches, uh, do our best to protect those players, to help those players along, um, knowing that that's a tall task. Well, Doesn't that put more like, pressure on you, like, though? Yeah. Yeah, whatever we need to do to win, you know, that's what we're here for. Mm -hmm. So that's that's more on my plate. It's more on my plate. Um, the, what's the other option? Turn it down mm -hmm. <laughs> and fold it in. And that's not in my DNA. So uh, if that's more on me, then so be it. But what's it like for I mean, I know I was just going to ask the same type of thing. But like a month ago, like, you know, the guys you finished the game with were either on the practice squad or not even on the team. You mm -hmm. know? So I mean, that's got to be pretty difficult. Uh, I mean, I've, I only can control what I can control. And so. Yeah, I don't waste time moping about it or, you know, saying what was me. It is what it is. This is a situation at hand. You know, men in the locker room are going to step up or take the excuse. And I'm, I'm not one to take excuses. And Malcolm, Malcolm Sunday's about as bothered as I've seen you post game. Um, I could guess what went into that, but i um, rather hear from you. I mean, it was just embarrassing, you know, quite frankly. Um, it was one of those things that. I didn't feel like as a team we had uh, a lot of fight. I'd rather get thrown out of a game and just lay down and take it. Um, and, you know, it was, a, it was a ton of frustrations. <clears throat> One being, you know, 
obviously me going back to, to New Orleans, that's a game that meant a lot to me, but just the, the demeanor of the team uh, really bothered me. Um, and then just the frustration of having guys that you, you work hard with and, and, and spend a lot of time with getting injured. Um, it was just a rough day overall, but um, you know, at this point in time, um, we need to figure out some things about ourselves. What do you mean the demeanor? demeanor? What do you mean the demeanor? Yeah. What do you say in the demeanor? Why do you say the demeanor of the team? What do you say? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you watched the tape, right? You watched the game. Yeah, I watched the game. What would you say the demeanor of the team was? You seem uninspired. Very good. That's what I would say. Okay. Seem uninspired. Well, I mean, our record would show that. Right. Cool. Is, so is uninspired a, a, a fair word to use? Yeah, I mean, I think, well, no, I wouldn't say uninspired. I think when a team jumps on you like the Saints did and things gets rolling, you find out a lot about yourself. You know, whether, whether you're going to get blown out regardless. You're either going to get blown out swing or you're going to get blown out laying down. And I think you had a little bit of both. You, you guys, we, this, team was aggress this team was won a Super Bowl because it was overly aggressive. It was aggressive. And it wasn't careless, but it was reckless. I mean, uh, it was, uh, wasn't reckless, but it was aggressive. Is that part of it? Part of no, I think we were see? aggressive in that. that. Our game plan was a very, really aggressive one. We said we're going to line up, we're going to take away the best players and make them beat us with other guys, and they did. But the offensive, so, si offensive side of the ball. I can only speak for the defense. But as a if captain of the team, though. I can only speak for the defense. So if you're not happy with the demeanor from that game on Sunday, how do you change that? We start in practice. I mean, I think we, we, we are critical about what we see on the tape because that's out there and that film doesn't lie. So. You evaluate ourselves, including me. There's, you know, plays that on any game that, you know, uncharacteristic of me and things that I need to do better in order for us, us to have success. So I think we're realistic about what that is, um, and some things are just non-negotiable. Um, we we can deal with guys getting beat. You know, mistakes happen. If you don't win at the point of attack, cool. But if you don't know what you're doing, um, if you're not giving us everything you got, especially with our backs around the wall, then that's just something. Um, I think as leaders of the team, <clears throat> we need to. Uh, nip in the butt because we're, you know, at that moment where we can't we can't carry non-essential personnel. Not to say that there are guys that aren't playing hard or the guys that aren't giving it what they got. Um, we just need every drop of it at this point, and we and we're going to demand that from the top of the roster all the way to the bottom. You just as said a moment ago talking. that uh, you want to be on the field with men who are not afraid to get beat, not afraid to mistake, get make mistakes, yet get better at them. Mm -hmm. But you could possibly be lining up with a bunch of guys who are drafted who are practice squad. How do you tell them that when the fear in their mind is, you know, I could get cut if, if I don't show good on tape? I mean, when you lose, everybody's job's at stake, mm -hmm. mine included. <laughs> Coaches, everybody. So, you know, you can focus on those things that, that <clears throat> you know, that, that make you afraid or, afraid or you could stand up, you know, and, and face it. And I think that's where we are is where for us to even have success or – you know, we want to talk about a division and all that. If we don't find guys that, that are ready to fight for it, it, it's all for naught. Because there's nothing, even if we're talking about trying to win a division, that's not going to be an easy road. And then you talk about, you know, playing with, with, with these type of guys. These are who we're going to have to win with. So for us to not, if we can't handle it right now, then there's not going to be a switch that we can turn on later and all of a sudden you know, be um, the team that everybody expects us to be. So we got to figure that out today. As, as much as you hate talking about the Super Bowl, did the Super Bowl create this, you think? <laughs> no. No. Super Bowl has no consequence of this year. We don't win a game because of the Super Bowl. We don't lose games because of the Super Bowl. Um, everything that you see this year, you can turn on the tape and, and look at exactly why we are the record we have. How do you tap into getting guys to, to have the right to demeanor? Because everyone reacts to things differently. Like you're a you're a super passionate guy. We all know that. Um, some guys get angry. Some guys get moody. What what, what does this team need to, to kind of get its head back into having the right demeanor? I, mean, I think it starts with the guys in front. You know, you're gonna have young guys that are gonna look to myself. They're gonna look at Carson. They're gonna look at you know Chris Long, Michael Bennett, Fletcher Cox, and see how are we approaching these meetings. How are we approaching? Um, our preparation practices, is there effort, is there urgency? Uh, are we demanding, you know, excellence from every single person, from every single coach? Or are guys looking for reasons to, you know, fold up? Are we looking for uh, outs in easy ways to, you know, either point the finger or kind of slip out of the limelight? You know, it's one of those things where <clears throat> we are what we are. You can either own that and change it or uh, you know, you can look for ways to, to, to hide. And um, 
unfortunately, with all these cameras and, and the way we're in the public eye, there's no hiding. So you might as well stand on what you got. Have you addressed your concerns about the demeanor with uh, necessary people? No, we just got in the building today. Will, will, will there be one? Something they plan on I about. think as a, not just me, but I think as a team, the, as we evaluate this tape in the next couple hours, you'll see. We'll, we'll see what's what and, and obviously address it.